Like so many of the coaches and therapists in my generation, we inherited a certain language from the therapists that we learned from. And one of those languages, for example, was error or fault. Instead of the word like compensation or movement solution, right? Or stable compensation. And the idea here is sometimes the language we're using isn't the best expression of trying to understand or trying to explain or teach. Now, one of those pitfalls has been bracing, right? Or, and so what you'll see is that there's definitely been a definitive evolution of that language, really pressed by people like Cal Dietz and, uh, and Chris Duffin and yours truly here and all the others. But the idea is, man, I don't necessarily need to brace the core unless I'm trying to get super stiff to do a one rep max thing, right? Better approximation of understanding, and frankly, Bracing the core hasn't gotten us out of back pain, has it? I mean, look, look at what's going on. I mean, we've never braced the core more and still see the kinds of back dysfunctions that we see, surgeries, et cetera, et cetera. So better understanding is that, hey, you've got a range where your abdominal musculature works really well. And, and I mean it, I mean, I'm talking about the trunk musculature, your ability to pressurize through your pelvic floor, through your diaphragm, this whole radial contractile field. And when you start to deviate beyond that, we start to turn off switches. We just can't react as well. We can't rotate as well. We start to just lose capacity. And look, if you're gonna bend over and pick something up, you can do that very slowly, but you certainly can't do it very quickly. So this is one of the reasons why the therapists out in the world will point out that they're still in this conversation of like, hey, flexion, like the strongest people in the world round their backs and they don't get hurt when they deadlift. And we're like, well, in those situations at post-maximal loads with lots of training, that doesn't happen, comma, they can't move fast, it doesn't train well, they can't put their arms over their head, it's not really our best case. But I wanna show you what we mean because a better uh, sort of choice of language is, hey, get organized, get the best organization you can. And then believe it or not, you're pretty clever at, at managing this, the correct stiffness for the task, right? You can't move at 100 miles an hour and be very stiff. You, uh, you, know, you can't be peak stiff. So here's, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about, about organization as, as an appropriate way of describing, hey, let's get into the best position possible so that musculature can work, right? So we can, we can use all of the reactive strength instead of sort of this re reflective, like I'm in a bad position and something happens and I get pulled out. So for example, if I'm on my back, right, and I don't get organized, right, here I am going to do a leg lift, and watch what happens and how long it takes for me to get my legs up off the ground. What I'm going to do is lift my legs up fast. So I'm just lifting, trying to get this flinch to happen. And you can see here that my legs will move, but I've just dragged my spine into a, a position where it isn't really working very well, right? So this is a classic case of tail wagging the dog and goes against our rules of what functional movement is, what good movement works in a wave contraction from trunk to periphery, from core to sleeve. So if I fire up the legs first, drag myself into extension, I'm lost with it left in a position where I don't have a lot of abdominal trunk choice, right? I, I for example, I flinch and I'm like, okay, now with this load, reclaim my flat spine. I can't, I'm holding up my big ass legs. Or I flinch and I'm like, okay, now try to take a breath. <sighs> it's super hard, why? Because I'm in a terrible position. Or, common not terrible position, I'm just in a position that gives me less choice. But if I'm able to maintain an appropriate organization, right, I know what my butt does, I put the skill in, I practice this, suddenly you can see that my flinch time goes up. I'm not slower getting my legs off the ground, right? It's not like an alien's about to burst out of my chest here. So if I get organized, then I'm gonna see faster function, better function, better reactive function. It all works better. And all I did was take a second to get myself out of this just beyond functional, beyond limits where tilt where I've lost capacity in my spine. So again, is this about pain, no pain? Well, if this was a painful position for you, because I'm just creating a bunch of shear, yanking on my psoas, my iliacus, dragging me, tail wagging the dog, dragging me into ex overextension pants, and that sensitized me, well then teaching someone not to do that, but hey, here's what a more mid-range reasonable position is, and all of a sudden, man, your speed goes up, your choice goes up, <sighs> you can still breathe, your stabilization goes up. You know, 
the key here is to, again, think what problem was this group trying to solve? And is that Q the end all be all, or can we do a better job describing it? So once again, bracing, stiffening before you move. Dude, throw someone under a little metabolic load or cardiorespiratory load, and let me know how that stiffness goes. You're gonna see that it's impossible, that a lot of these peak stiffness ideas, right, braced ideas, happened in a vacuum where we weren't under massive cardiorespiratory demand or speed load demand, and uh, it worked in, on the table. But we're only gonna say that for us, something is valuable if it accounts for all phenomenon and it scales up. And I tell you what, it's difficult to teach 10-year-olds how to get stiff. It's easier to teach 10-year-olds how to make sure that they can feel the positions that matter. Can you squeeze your butt in that position? Great, fantastic, that's the game. Can I squeeze my butt when I'm overextended? Less so. Maybe that tells me that I'm making choices about physiology that are gonna impact my learning. And remember, we will default to our most practiced positions and shapes when we need to. So which means is, hey, I want you to practice getting organized, not practice bracing.